Hey guys, how's it going? Caprain here. I want to give you guys an update on the newly announced expansion, Kobolds and Catacombs. I'm at BlizzCon. I just had a pretty long day doing lots of stuff here. You probably have seen it if you've uh, watched BlizzCon or are at BlizzCon. So I'm not exactly at my best, but I really want to give you guys my initial thoughts on some of the cards and uh, the expansion that I have learned as a whole so far. So you know, you guys can at least appreciate that, and uh, we'll get to work on some um, more in-depth content once I get home in a few days. So, there are a lot of cool cards in this expansion. More importantly, there is a new game mode, the Dungeon Game Mode. I don't exactly know what it's called, but basically it's a PvE pre-constructed deck uh, pre -constructed. it's like a deck construction game mode um, apparently there's not much in terms of rewards but there is a lot of fun and certainly I appreciate that it is a game mode where you really explore the depths of what's possible with the card existing cards plus some extras through kind of a combination of a drafting PvE adventure that builds up with really difficult bosses and that's pretty Pretty cool. Obviously, we'll have to check it out. You can check it out if you are at BlizzCon, but um, yeah, I didn't have time to today, so I can't give you guys any first-hand experience, but I do love me some Hearthstone PvE content. As far as the cards themselves, uh, they did reveal, I don't know, maybe about a dozen or so. There is more than meets the eye to some of these. So, for instance, the, uh, the Druid card here, a Lesser Jasper Spellstone. It's one mana, deal two damage to a minion which is a pretty decent card, and these uh, spell stones, I imagine there's one for each of the classes, and they're cards that upgrade themselves once you meet a certain condition, so once you've gained three armor, as a druid, that might actually not be that easy unless you have cards that directly give you armor, because hearing up three times is actually kind of annoying and definitely really crappy tempo, and druid struggles with that. So it's a good card by itself, and if you manage to put synergy cards, it becomes a really good card. I don't think they showed the middle version, but I think the top version was a one mana deal six damage uh, to a minion. And these uh, spell stones have three tiers. There's the base tier, there's the middle tier, and there's the greater tier. And the greater tier of this card is deal six, so I would imagine the mid tier would be deal four. Four. And there's pretty good cards like these. If you get them in the early game, turn one, it's pretty good. You can kill one drop, you can kill a decent number of two drops for one mana. That's solid. And if you get it in the late game, it's not worthless because you can just take your time, build it up to where it becomes a good card. So overall, I think these cards are uh, very well designed. Um, now that probably means you won't see that much play because generally the cards you see play are re really broken ones. This scene is very good to me, so, you know, I'd give it a decent chance it'll see some play. But I just like the design a lot. Um, discuss about play once we see more cards out of the expansion, I suppose. Then we have Lesser Sapphire Spellstone. It's a Shaman variant of the Spellstone. So for 7, you copy a friendly minion, which is obviously really bad for 7 mana. If you overload 3, it upgrades you copy a minion twice. And the greater version, you copy minion three times. So triple copy on one card, that's definitely very good. Especially if you get lucky enough to land on a decent minion. But it should be very good. Um, but yeah, seven mana, pretty conditional effect. Shaman decks at overload are typically ones that try to tempo their opponents out. And this costs seven mana. So yeah, it's a very clunky card uh, from the look of it. But it is an extremely powerful card. And the balance of clunkiness and super powerful, super high-weighted cards is always something that you have to see more cards of the set to really evaluate the worth of. But I think it'll be a pretty decent arena card, and that is pretty fair as arena values standalone power more than synergistic meta power. Guild Recruiter highlights one of the new mechanics uh, five mana for two four is obviously terrible, but trust me, the recruit mechanic is pretty good. So um, recruits a minion that costs four or less. Recruit is basically it pulls it out of the deck. So pulls it out of the deck, slams it into the battlefield. So if you play this and in your deck your only minion that costs four or less is a yeti, you play this and it puts a yeti from your deck into play as you play this card. Is that good? Probably not very good, but 
in terms of combo potential, there is some serious worth there. Now, I can't think of the top of my head a card that would work here, but this is a restrictive RNG effect with combo potential. And those things stacked up uh, can be very valuable. I do think the stats are extremely crappy for the mana cost in this case, but who knows? Uh, the combo value of that when it comes to constructed play can certainly take over the downside. We have the Warlock Legendary card, Rin the First Disciples. It's a 6 mana 3 6 taunt, which is really bad stats. When it dies, it gives the first seal to your hand. Now, there's a bunch of seals. I don't remember exactly how it works, but from memory, a seal is a 5 mana cost summon a minion, and the minion. Uh, is like a 1-1, one, one, and then, I don't know if it's the Death Rattle or something, but basically it's a 5-mana 1-1, one, one, then a 5-mana 2-2, two, two, then a 3-3, three, three, then a 4-4, four, four, then a 5-5, five, five, and after that, you get a 10-mana 10-10, ten, ten, and the Battle Cry destroys your opponent's deck. So that's really good, right? But obviously, it's really, really difficult to pull that off. Uh, I did talk to Mike Donay, and he mentioned that some, most of the other things he said are demons, uh, the, the first seals, whatever they spawn. So one way to um, work it out is possibly, very optimistically, to have two summoning portals in play, I think they're called, ones that reduce the mana cost of your minions. So if you have two of those in play, these each cost one, so you just chain them and like sack pack them or something, I don't know. There's possibly something there but it does seem really, really shitty. But again, we haven't seen that much of the set, and there's already maybe something you can do to manipulate it. In any case, it sounds like a fun meme deck that I am uh, interested in checking out. Carnivorous Cube, uh, one of the better cards that I've seen from this small release event here at BlizzCon. 5 mana 4, 6 is decent, so if you don't have anything to destroy when you play it, not a big deal. Um, Battle card destroys a friend of the minion. You think that's bad? It could be. If people are starting to play hard removal, that could be really bad. But uh, the Death Rattle summons two copies of it, which can be really crazy. Um, I really like this card because sometimes when you're going a bit wide on the board, um, you want to keep playing things. You want to keep developing tempo and value. But it, the more things you play, the more you get punished by, you know, like a brawl, a flame strike, that kind of stuff. So this card gets around that. It, it manages your tempo. It's a decent standalone card. And it allows you to keep pushing on the board in a situation where you don't actually want more things on the board in that given turn. And uh, it's a very clever card. I like it a lot. Um, I think it's a little bit below the power level, but it has that combo potential, much like a lot of the other cards that we've seen, which puts it in the potentially might see play pile. It's an interesting card to see in the meta, possibly. Uh, some Jailer. Alright, 2 mana 1-1. One, one. Kobolds, this is one of them. When it dies, you get sil 3 Silver Hand Recruits to your hand. Silver Hand Recruits for 1 mana 1-1 one, one dudes. Is that good? No, that's really not very good. Um, but I imagine the kobolds are going to have some funky, you know, battle cry sounds when you play them and death sounds and stuff. So it might be some lovable little shitheads that might underperform, but I don't mind it too much if they uh, have other redeeming qualities like that. Kobold Illusionist, 4 cost, 3-3. Three, three. Death Rattle summons a 1-1 one, one copy of a minion from your hand. Uh, not bad. Not bad. Again... Low power level card, interesting effect, potentially high combo value. And, uh, you know, they seem to suggest that this might be a trend. Uh, it might be the case that there's a lot of these cards, and while, you know, maybe 80% of them are just going to be useless, there's going to be a few that I think are going to really work. And, you know, most likely it's not this one, but it could be. You know, you could maybe make some kind of like Malagos Rogue that constantly pushes for an early game win condition through direct damage spells. That's entirely possible. So uh, I think all these cards are going to make the first few days or weeks of the expansion very exciting because there's going to be a lot of potential candidates for the next overpowered combo deck. And that should be a very fun phase to play through. Wandering Monster, 2 mana, Hunter Secret. When an enemy attacks your hero, summon a 3 cost 
minion as the new target. So a bit of RNG effect, but it's a pretty high power level card. The instant effect is quite valuable. The damage prevention is very valuable. You can compare this, um, not directly, but in a fair way to get down, which summons a 2-1, blocks the attack. Well, a 3-mana minion from 2-mana, and there are some secret manipulation mana cost cards you guys are aware of. Um, there could be some serious power here. Once again, in line with a lot of the other cards, seems okay, maybe a little bit weakish, but with combos, with certain decks, with certain um, archetypes involved, could be very powerful card. A Lunith. Is that a legendary weapon? It is a legendary weapon. Wow. Um, I believe every class is getting a legendary weapon this set, which makes me wonder how it's going to work with oozes and things. Um, uh, basically, in the past, you, you had a really difficult time relying on a weapon and building a deck around it unless you were playing a hyper aggro deck. This is obviously not a hyper aggro card, so... I don't know, I hope they they see the value in nerfing oozes or putting some um, weapon destruction prevention cards, something like that. Now basically, if it's control versus control, uh, if that's the meta and everyone's playing these weapons, and they do seem very good, um, you know, the decisive factor is going to be oozing the weapons before they get too much value. And I hope the game doesn't devolve into that, but we shall see. In terms of the cards themselves, they are pretty fun. Most weapons seem to have ongoing effects like these. The durability is not used each time the ability triggers. It's basically like a passive effect. The durability is there, so if you really want to like buff your weapon and attack somehow, or it serves as a way for your opponent to start removing the durability from it, because not all weapon removal is hard weapon removal. There's soft weapon removal. So if this is a one durability weapon, it would have been considerably worse. Though I think at two durability, it would be exactly the same. Uh, effect of the card, add a turn, draw three cards. It's pretty good, right? Yeah. That's really good, actually. Um, looking at the color, I'm actually not sure. I think it's a rogue card, but we'll see. We'll get a better idea once more cards are released. Uh, just seeing a dozen cards of an, of an expansion, you really only get the idea of... You only get the impression of what they try, or try to do with the expansion, not so much the power level of the cards, anyway. Um, the un in <laughs> Unidentified Elixir. So it's a 3 mana priest buff, plus 2, plus 2, and uh, you get a bonus effect when it's in your hand. So what this does is, um, I think one of the effects is it summons a 1-1 one, one copy of the card that you target. Sometimes it gives a lifesteal. I think it's like 4 effects, something like that. And you don't know what the effect is until you draw the card. So when you draw the card, it does a little bit something extra. It's a little bit of an RNG effect, but the desired purpose of the card is still the same. You get a buff, so you design the deck the same way. Introducing a little bit of RNG to that, I don't think is too big of a deal. So overall, I actually like the card very much. Uh, we'll probably see a lot of it in Arena, and that might be a pretty big swing there. Gather your party. Six cost recruit a minion. Remember, recruit just pulls the minion from your deck. So if you have a bunch of 8, 9, and 10 drops, this card is absolutely insane. Uh, if you don't, not so insane. It looks like it's a pretty good Control Warrior card, but Control Warrior might have uh, to pass a lot of other hurdles before it is okay as a deck in its own right. So wouldn't get too excited about this card right away. But again, who knows? More of the Fox is a card that everyone will be getting, I think, uh, this coming week. If you were at BlizzCon, you get a golden version of it, which is pretty nice. Is it a good card? I don't think it's a good card. Uh, it's 8-mana, uh, 6-6, six, six, and you summon a 0-8 for your opponent. And if you break the chest, you get awesome loot. I imagine if they break it on their own with like a Void Terror or something, they get the loot, which would be an absolute catastrophe. The loot is one card. I think we saw four of them. I think there might only be four, but they're extremely powerful. Uh, the one that I really liked was like a chalice, and you draw a card, and it fills your hand with copies of that card. It's, that can be like draw 10, basically. So it, it can be absolutely crazy with the effect, but it is random. It's not necessarily going to be good. 
and it's an 8 mana cost card with not just a secondary effect, a secondary effect that could only trigger if you're in a position to actually trigger it and not hit your opponent for 8 in the face otherwise. It's, it's a really clunky card, but I think it's cool. Uh, I think it is very much like what we saw four years ago with ETC, Vitor Chieftain, 5 mana 5-5, five, five, get like, uh, what was it, like a 4 mana rock card or whatever. I think it's very similar to that. Fairly low power level, really cool card, a lot of very high variance effects, and more importantly, this card is coming a lot earlier than the expansion, so we're just going to be able to just have some fun with some of the cards that would otherwise not see any play. Obviously, not all the cards they're going to make are going to be amazing. The fact that we get to try this so much sooner, I think, makes it a very interesting card, and I look forward to trying a few decks with it in the coming weeks. Crushing Walls. 7 mana, destroy your opponent's left and rightmost minions. You get the idea. It's a 7 mana hunter card that doesn't do face damage, though. This control hunter thing has been beaten to death, and I don't think this is going to be the breaking point. Um, man, I think this is a priest card. So 3 mana, zero, 3. After you cast 3 spells in a turn, summon a 5-5 five, five dragon. And that seems pretty hard to do, but again, if you can design a deck around it, it can be very strong. It's just because it's a weapon, we don't have any weapon searching capabilities right now. Because it's a legendary weapon, the new type of legendary cards, um, it might be very difficult to get this consistently. So yeah, you know, you can make a deck that has a ton of spells that trigger this ability successfully, but how does that deck perform if you don't draw a Dragon Soul? I would guess very poorly. So this card seems a bit weak, but again, if there are more cards that support this type of deck, that can change instantaneously. Oh, and I guess that's it. But yeah, there's going to be a lot of weapons. Um, I don't know their release schedule for these cards, but they did mention that the expansion is coming out in December, and I have some top secret insight for you guys. Uh, Blizzard really, really likes their holidays, so if they say December, they mean the first few weeks of December. So the expansion is probably roughly a month away, if I had to guess, and um, that means we're going to see a lot of cards being revealed uh, very soon, and that should be very exciting. We should be able to shape how we see these cards as well as the ones that come out a little bit better and maybe uh, guess what the game will look like a month from now. For now, I hope you guys enjoyed my uh, fairly tired and rushed review, but uh, I hope you guys uh, are excited about the upcoming expansion as every time we have so many cards implemented in the core of the game uh, we have an entirely new game to discover and that experience regardless of if you like kobolds or lich kings or if you play arena or if you play constructed that experience is just so awesome that i really look forward to it every time and the buildup of announcement of cards helps that along so much so hope you guys feel the same way hope i see you guys in the upcoming card review videos that are inevitably on their way. And we'll see you guys tomorrow.